Welcome to 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Behrens. Michael, we definitely have our work cut out for us here over the next few days, right? Yeah, I mean, we are in the kind of the, the best period right now where temperatures are the warmest, the most sunshine's out there. We get rid of all of that this weekend. We get rid of all that. That's right. Yeah, it's sunny out there right now. 12 hours from now, the clouds are moving in, tracking our next storm this weekend. And I know the talk of the town has been the cold coming in yeah. next week. But before we talk about that, we got to talk about what is right in front of us. That is the threat of snow tomorrow. So let's get right into the weather forecast. And you'll see that we're looking at snow from about 3 a.m. until 12 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. And so what this means is that as we head into the next couple of days, we're going to be uh, tracking that next system rolling on in. You'll notice that it starts here pretty early in the morning. And then we're going to be looking at that combination of rain and snow. Just drive with caution if you're going to be out there on the roadways. All right, so here comes all this energy coming in from the Gulf of Mexico here, and that's why we're looking at rain and not snow. Now, as you look here at the map, the green on the map is going to be the rain. The blue is the snow, and then as you look at the pinkish color, that's going to be that rain-snow mix. So we're kind of battling it out between cold air from the north, warm air from the south. This scoots on out of here. Sunday, you're going to look at a mostly dry day, but I want you to pay close attention to this. A coastal storm that's going to be riding up the I-95 corridor, we kind of get brushed by that. We're not looking at a direct impact, but I do think we'll be close enough in proximity to get a few snow showers, maybe even a, snow, a few snowflakes heading into Monday or heading into Sunday, going into Sunday night. So as we look at this right now, heading into today, not a whole lot going on. Quickly, though, after midnight, take a look from Mansfield down to Mount Gilead, Delaware, Lancaster, Logan. There's that rain snow line. If you're north and east of the line, you're looking at snow. If you're south of the line, we're looking at all rain. Look at how it starts to kind of push southwestward. Here's the thing, though. With temperatures very warm, we're going to be like 36, 37, 38. Even though we're looking at snow, we're not looking at a whole lot of accumulation. Maybe a dusting, maybe if that. And then as we head towards 930 in the morning, here we go. I-70 is a cutoff. North of I-70, we've got your snow. South of I-70, we have your rain. And here's the best part. If you do have to travel tomorrow afternoon, this is long gone. And I think all of Saturday afternoon should be looking nice and clear if you are trying to get out and about. Maybe a flurry or two heading into late Saturday night. How much rainfall? It's going to vary from town to town. Generally speaking, I think a quarter of an inch is what we are expecting. If you are in Columbus, we're looking at maybe a little bit more, but then look down here. We do have a couple areas that won't be getting quite as much. Now, do we get snow? I'm not really thinking so in the metro, but as you head up towards Marion, Bucyrus, even north of there, up towards Mansfield, the probability of a little bit of snowfall is higher. I'm not worried about that accumulation on the roadways, and I'm definitely not concerned about icy roadways because we're going to be just too warm for it. So that is some good news. So tomorrow, look how mild. We're talking 40 for the high. And then look here, a few flurries on Sunday, but we are about seven, 17 degrees colder on Sunday. And Sunday is a transitionary day from the mild air that we get tomorrow to the bitter cold that's coming in by Monday. Take a look at this right now. All this cold air throughout the year is stored up to the north. Again, the polar vortex is this column of rotating cold air that typically stays in the higher latitudes. What we're getting right now is a little bit of a weakening in the jet stream here. So there you go. The jet stream kind of wobbles and wanes, but that's going to be diving all the way down to the deep south. And it's not just us. This is going to cover a lot of real estate in the days to come. And you can see right now when we're talking pinks and we're talking purples on this map, Man, we're talking a massive Arctic blast here showing up just in time for Monday and Tuesday with millions in the path. So we have issued not one, not two, but three 10 TV weather impact alert days for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday as we're going to be looking at temperatures only in the single digits as we begin the week. The average high for this time of the year right around 37. We are warmer than that on Saturday and then it's all downhill from there as we head towards Monday. So we're looking at the single digits. How bad does it get though? Okay, so again, Monday through Wednesday, wind chills possibly as low as negative 20. So think about that. We have not had that kind of cold this year. And in fact, we have not had that kind of cold since 2022. So it's been a long time. So 
we definitely got to be prepared for this here as we go into the next few days. Layer up and limit time outside because it's about to get downright chilly. Now by Monday, this is Monday afternoon. Whew, look at Minneapolis and Green Bay, negative 25, close to negative 30. That's not the case here. Again, the wind chill will be about negative 10, still bad, just not quite as bad as what they're seeing north and west of us here. As we get a look at the wind chill on Monday, as we head towards the afternoon, stays below zero, so it's really bad. But then look at this right here, 7 a.m., negative 15, 9 o'clock, negative 15, okay? This is dangerous cold that we're going to be dealing with. If you don't let the water drip in your faucets, we could definitely be talking a round of frozen pipes. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. So as we move ahead in time on Sunday, we're get, tracking the possibility of a few flurries. Again, here comes the cold. New model data that we got within the last hour. I actually bumped up temperatures just a little bit. So that is some good news. But let's take a look here at the cold that we have coming in on Tuesday. Tuesday's a little bit better. Again, remember on Monday, we had that negative 15. We lose that on Tuesday. So it is a few degrees warmer, but still, it's not really until Thursday of this next week that we actually migrate back into the 30s and at least we get close to the freezing. So I know it's going to be pretty cold here and it's also going to be pretty cold down in Atlanta where the <laughs> Buckeyes are playing too. Yeah, I, I mean, we are, like you said, in this cold pattern for a pretty long time, but at, at least there's some weather to get out and enjoy today. It, exactly. Yeah, get the vitamin D because after today, we're not going to see the sun for a bit. Yeah, and you know, that weather, like you said, it's going to be cold for the Buckeyes down in Atlanta, but it actually uh, worked out pretty good this afternoon for the, the Buckeyes send-off that's happening today. They're scheduled to leave from the Woody Hayes Athletic Center in just over two Two hours at 430 this afternoon. Fans are invited to come stand along the route, cheer them on. The route will begin on Jack Nicholas Drive and continue on to Bora Drive. There will be free parking available in the lot south of Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. And if you're flying out of John Glenn in Columbus for the game this weekend, be ready for some changes getting there. This is the new video posted on Facebook showing the drive into CMH looking a a little different these days, a few shifts along your drive, um, the international on the International Gateway Roadway. You can see the entrance to the cell phone lot and rental car center. It's now on the left. You'll want to stay right to get to terminal and garage. Keep in mind, there are now just two lanes and the speed limit is lowered to 25 miles per hour. And of course, driving another option to get down to that game. Many will be taken, so we mapped out that drive and how much you're going to spend to get there. Here's the fastest route to Atlanta. According to Google Maps, if you're leaving from Columbus, you'll drive 567 miles, which is nearly a nine hour drive longer, of course, with stops. If it'll take you first through Cincinnati, then Kentucky and Tennessee before you get down to Georgia. And according to AAA, the average price of gas for this drive nationwide is about 310 a gallon. Breaking down that trip, it would cost you using AAA's, AAA's gas calculator. If your car gets 26 miles per gallon, You'd use about 43.92 gallons during your trip. And that driving, that means you would spend another $141.26 for that fuel. Right now, AAA says gas prices in Georgia are just a bit cheaper than here in Ohio. And of course, speaking of Georgia, when you guys head down there, we do want to take a quick look at the weather for that game on Monday. Some good news here. Forecast, honestly, not looking too bad in terms of weather conditions, but it's those temperatures you'll have to watch out for. Here's Monday, hour by hour. We're looking at just a few clouds out there over Atlanta. No rain, no snow, nothing like that, at least for that game. But again, what you are going to be contending with are those bitter cold temperatures. But it's not all bad through the whole weekend. I want to start out with tomorrow morning. 46 degrees in Atlanta, 10 a.m. It's not going to be feeling too bad. As we get into the afternoon, we even could touch 60 down there in the Peachtree State. This is going to be some pretty comfortable weather for fans making the trip down early, making a weekend of things. As we head into Sunday, we start off not so bad. This 10 a.m. again, hanging around in the 40s, but we quickly go in the wrong direction. That Arctic blast that's impacting our weather here in central Ohio, just as impactful down in Georgia. Temperatures falling throughout the day. Sunday, we will be down to 29 um, in Atlanta by the time many are starting to wrap up their Sunday evening plans, and they get even colder as we head toward Monday morning. We're down to 17 out there to kick things off early in the day. Monday with temperatures barely warming up throughout the rest of the day. It is going to be 
a forecast many from Ohio are accustomed to by the time uh, we get toward kickoff there on Monday night. That forecast is for a few clouds and temperatures that will be hanging around in the mid 20s. And of course, remember all of our Ohio State coverage as we head through this weekend and next week is in one place, including one on one interviews of players throughout the weekend streaming 10 TV plus you're watching that right now or of course you can get that app on your Roku, Amazon Fire Stick or Apple TV. Wow. So go Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes. This is exciting. <laughs> yeah, start of that weekend forecast. Not so bad, but you know, by the end of it, I mean, for Ohio, yeah, it's about normal. Notre it, Dame too, honestly, about normal. Yeah, I'm glad that the game is inside. Yeah, I'm glad that I will be inside somewhere here with our forecast with when our that for game kicks off. <laughs> it is, yeah, it'll be brutal. Good thing, good thing that the, our days of outdoor games at the shoe are long gone. Yeah, find yourself a place somewhere warm and take that game yeah, in. Absolutely. Yeah. Now for some environment news. Scientists say they found an unlikely ally in the environmental fight against plastic waste. These are baby beetles known as lesser mealworms. They love to feast on one of the planet's most problematic polluters. Scientists in Africa fed them only plastic for a month and found the insect can break it down in their guts. Our future plan is to go further to, to see if we can reproduce this bacteria for plastic degradation. Across the world, mountains of plastic waste are rising higher with some 440 million tons added each year. Scientists say it would take decades for it to naturally break down. And continuing with the environment, more electric vehicles charging stations are on the way to Ohio with state officials asking for your feedback about what to do next. They say there is still funding available to expand the electric vehicle market in the state. Drive Ohio is hoping to hear from businesses and other industry leaders about ideas for potential future projects related to EV charging. This feedback could help shape the future of the industry in our state and the best ways to spend the money on it. It could be battery storage, it could be airport charging. Uh, we're also looking for workforce training, ways that we can um, kind of infuse uh, training into the state of Ohio and really prepare the workforce for this influx of electric vehicle manufacturing. Right now, Ohio has 18 electric vehicle charging stations open across the state with more than a dozen scheduled to open within the next year. The deadline to submit a response um, was this week. And when it comes to cold and those EVs, listen up. Mechanics say the bitter cold will make the car lose range because of the battery. But there are steps you can take today before that cold weather gets here to make sure your car is ready for the road. If you can maintain cabin temperature and you can reduce fan speed, reduce some of the electronics, you can maximize that, that range. Mechanics also recommend keeping your EV in a garage to help preserve the battery's charge. Now to the latest on California wildfires. Pasadena Transit bus drivers hailed as heroes after rushing into the flames of the Eaton Fire to help evacuate senior citizens. Jasmine Veal is reporting in Altadena with cell phone video of what those drivers faced. Right down Lake Avenue. Yeah. Oh my God. As flames closed in, a group of Pasadena bus drivers oh drove gosh. into the inferno last oh week. God. Our eyes are red from all the ashes. They were called to help rescue hundreds of people from senior living facilities across Altadena, threatened by the Eaton fire. Firefighters are helping, every, the, uh, the nurses were helping. We're putting wheelchairs all the way down there, locking in place. 35-year-old Erasmo Rodriguez, an operations manager with Pasadena Transit, was the first to jump into a bus that night and race to Washington and Altadena, where he saw this chaotic scene as facilities burned. We're just boarding the buses, feeding as many people as we could. You know, it didn't matter where they sat, on the ground, anywhere. You know, leave your walker behind, leave your watcher behind, uh, fit as many people as we could. Pasadena Transit Maintenance Manager Adan Moreira says he also saw the fire on the hills near his home and came back to work to help. I told my GM how many buses you need out there to help him evacuate. We took four more buses. It was horrible going up there, just a lot of black smoke, 
Uh, fire embers hitting the bus, hitting us. There's a bush in front of 7-Eleven caught on fire right in front of our eyes. He says he did his best to comfort those seniors who were confused and scared. So right here, I had an elderly lady. Uh, she had her dog. She, she was she got out of the house so so fast she forgot the leash. Letty Ochoa, Pasadena Transit's general manager, says she staffed 11 buses, sending them out in a caravan through the smoke. You know, I said, you don't have to do this. And they're like, no, we want to do this. Let us do it. Like, we're, we're on our way. So they didn't even think about it. Risking their own lives for strangers and for those these bus drivers say they know well as regular passengers. These guys are heroes, true heroes, because they're not trained for that. We're trying to move you know, the city around, but not do this. Rodriguez, though, refuses to be called that, saying he did what he had to do. It needs to get done. So it means to do it. For more information on how you can help out those displaced families and first responders battling the wildfires, go to 10tv.com and search wildfires. You'll find a link to the story on your screen now with all the answers. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Check this out amid the fires in Preston and uh, fires in California. Preston Martin figured the retro blue Volkswagen bus that he had slept in for a year during college was sure to be a goner given that he parked it in a Malibu neighborhood just before that fire ripped through, reducing homes and cars to rubble. So the surfboard maker was stunned when he found the vehicle had survived, but a photo of it had actually been taken and was circulating on television online, going viral, giving people some kind of measure of joy amidst all that devastation out there. Crazy to see that. That is great marketing it. material right there. <laughs> I, buy this car and it will survive a fire. I, I had to buy it like 60 years ago. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that is true. That is true. It's crazy that it made it. I mean, when you think of like some of the iconic like California surfer um, imagery, you think a lot of those old Vita buses that were kind of popular right. out there. It, it, they say these wild. older vehicles were much tougher than some of the cars today. Yeah, certainly so, that I don't is. know. <laughs> For sure. Uh, and turning now to space, uh, footage shows debris from SpaceX Starship uh, test flight falling across the sky over the Turks and Caicos Islands on Thursday evening. Um, earlier in the day, SpaceX launched the seventh flight test flight of Starship from Boca Chica, Texas. After the launch, the super heavy booster returned to the launch tower nearly seven minutes later, but SpaceX announced they had lost all communications with the Starship's upper stage. They later confirmed that they did lose that Starship before they ended their webcast, but that video there, that's gotta be crazy to see coming over, over your head. I just can't wait for all the conspiracy theorists to wake up and be like, aliens or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I mean, not what you wanna <laughs> see, but I mean, Glad, glad it was only a test right. No one was injured. Uh, think about think about how wild. fast that's probably moving yeah. through the atmosphere. Absolutely. I mean, it's gonna we're be talking sound thousands. Better. Yeah, we're talking faster than the speed of sound. Yeah, wild stuff there. And finally, if you think our snow has been bad this winter, check out this video posted to UDOT Cottonwood Canyon's X account. The snow they had to clear this past weekend. This was up in Utah. The road grader was out throwing snow so thick. It looks like a wave of water there on the side. Look at that snow. That's wild. That's all. Awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. That's up in the mountains. They get all kinds of crazy snow. They obviously got the snow gear ready to move this out of the way. But, I mean, you know, comparatively, not so bad here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take our two and three inch snowstorms that we've been getting. Yeah. I mean, we, we can deal with that. I, I can't imagine how much snow they get up in the mountains. I'm a snow guy. I'd rather have this than the tornadoes. Yeah. And like we what we had last spring. Yeah. I mean, yeah. definitely. Uh, nice when we get a break from the severe weather, but we, ha we had a tornado in December. So I mean, That's it can right. happen all yeah, the time you, here in Ohio. Yeah, you tweeted that out. That's crazy. Yeah. So it can happen any time of the year as long as all the ingredients kind of come together. Yeah, hopefully this year will be calmer than last uh, year, though. Knock on wood, right? <laughs> all right, that is it for us here on 10 TV Plus. Coming up, tune in at 6 o'clock for Jerry Martz. He'll have the latest on the chill coming on Sunday night.